Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, it's literally been like a year since I've uploaded, but obviously we all probably all know the reasons why. We've been in the middle of a global pandemic this year, so 2020 has been a bit rubbish for everyone, let's just say. So, um, I just wanted to jump on, because I've been wanting to go back to vlogging and um, doing videos for a while, but there was just no point during lockdown, especially the early stages, because I literally wasn't really doing anything. Um, I was shielding for the first four months, um, so I didn't see the point. I was literally sitting in my house, couldn't even go out a walk with Fergie or nothing. My mum was staying with me, so we literally stayed in the house for four months straight. We had to get my dad and other people to come and walk Fergie um, and drop off shopping, etc. So I don't think it'd be much fun filming that. But now things are slowly getting back to normal, even though I think the numbers are going back up and we might be back in another lockdown either before Christmas or whatever then um, I've, I've been doing a bit more and I'm back staying in my house I'll touch on that in a minute um, but yeah I thought and it's coming up to Christmas which is my favourite time so I really wanted to start filming again so I thought why not I've filmed a few clips over the last few weeks but I didn't want to upload them without putting up this video just to explain sorry what's been going on this year and just a wee introduction back so um i'll just quickly update you um with what's going on this year and yeah so like i said global pandemic um so january was fine um january is january isn't it um february mainly actually split up so that's when my mum came to stay with me so she stayed with me and came in February and then obviously we went into lockdown in March so my mum was still staying with me when we went into lockdown um, and then I had to shield so it meant we couldn't even go back to my mum's house and go and stay with my dad. He'd been working away in Norway as well and it, the virus was quite bad there so we didn't want to risk it um, so we stayed at my house like I said for four months, couldn't even go out a walk. Um, I think we went through the stages that everyone else did in lockdown. At the start we was motivated, organising, cleaning out all the cupboards, getting the house like all intact and everything. Then I, my mum went through the baking stage of lockdown where everyone was baking, my mum was baking for my grandma, my dad, that sort of thing. Um, and then what else did we do? Just chilled and then we went through the couldn't be bothered stage where wasn't motivated, literally getting up every day, changing clothes, usually into like a lounge suit, literally sitting watching TV all day, um, eating, going to bed, like it was just in a bit of a rut to be honest. Um, the weather helped, we got really good weather at the start of lockdown, so the days it was really sunny was really good because we just sat in the garden, it was really good, but the days it wasn't like that was pretty dull, um, fed up just sitting in the house. Even watching TV, we didn't really watch anything that good because we didn't want to watch anything serious. Like we ended up watching like 90 Day Fiance, all that sort of stuff, um, because we just wasn't really in the mood for anything. Um, I was really paranoid at the start. Um, obviously, I'm high risk, so the numbers on the news and that wasn't good. Um, and I was just getting myself worked up. Um, so I actually had to. Mum made me stop watching the news, I came off Facebook because um, I was just becoming obsessed with it, reading numbers, getting paranoid every day I thought I had symptoms, which obviously I couldn't, I didn't leave the house but um, even my, dog, my dad dropping stuff off I was just panicking in case I caught it some way, I didn't have it obviously, um, but yeah I think like the news numbers, social media, it's really not good um, for people's mental health. So I came off that and started doing some meditation and um, my mum advised it which really helped and um, I got the Headspace app so I was doing that in the morning and at bed because I was finding it really hard to sleep as well and um, so I'd really recommend that um, just if you're feeling anxious or um, suffering with anything um, like mental health it does quite help. It took me a while to get into it and um, my mum can go into meditation really easily but I had started at the basics, the guided meditation. So I'd done that and then I also, 
my mum's friend gave me the fern cotton cam book which would really help as well i read that and it sort of all explains like how your body works and your mind and all that so reading that totally helped as well and um, so i'd recommend that two things you know if you're feeling like i said a bit anxious or something and um, there's also things on youtube the internet and all that i've never suffered from anxiety or mental health before and um, so it's quite scary and it's really horrible to be honest i'm not saying i didn't believe it before but i know there is some people that play on it a bit so when someone said the words anxiety i used to like roll my eyes but now i totally understand where they come from um, and it's opened up my eyes to it i'm not saying i'm that bad but definitely at the start i was my mind was just doing overtime all the time and um, now i'm much more not relaxed i just feel a bit more comfortable with it i think especially where we are our our numbers are quite low um, and because of the news of the vaccine hopefully coming out and that sort of thing and i spoke to my doctor my respiratory doctor as well and he thinks i would just get mild symptoms if i was to catch it which i'm not sure and obviously everyone's affected differently but with that few things together i am feeling a bit more relaxed about it so fingers crossed it stays that way and we get a vaccine and into the new year we're you know on our way back to normal so yeah that's what was going on at the start of the year and um, so mom came to stay with me like i said in february we just started looking into getting care sorted for myself like i said me and lee split up so i'd already had direct payments in place for help getting me ready for work in the mornings that sort of thing so i needed that increased but because i wasn't assigned a care manager i had to go all through that process and to be fair it was a nightmare like i can do a whole separate video on that if people are interested but i had to wait like phone request an appointment or request a care manager the guy on the phone i got was not helpful at all he suggested i just moved into sheltered housing which obviously didn't go down well with me or like my family it was just ridiculous like i own my own house i work i'm 28 why would i give all that up to go and live in sheltered housing so yeah that was ridiculous but um as soon as i got my care manager he was actually really great like totally understood done everything he could to get you know the care in the hours i was entitled to so i luckily got seven nights approved um and a couple hours during the day as well so that all got approved at the start of lockdown but then obviously um lockdown all that sort of stuff happened so i'd already had carers lined up i say carers i call them my pas so i had my best friend from school dion she actually done it before for me and then she moved out the road but she's worked in care since leaving school and she was looking for a new job so when i text her it sort of everything just worked out it all fell into place so uh, dion lined up my auntie who was already doing it and my other um, pa gail that used to get me ready for work in the mornings as well so between the three of them i had quite a good team already set up ready to go but the only thing that was delaying us was um, tracheostomy training which again i could do a whole other video about because it was an absolute nightmare to try and find like it's all down to insurances and all that sort of stuff so the nhs wouldn't cover it because it's not nhs staff that sort of thing so i managed to find a private company in england and in one way the virus actually helped because it meant the training could be carried out online just through zoom so when the restrictions lifted a bit in scotland or in aberdeen anyway i was actually able to get my carers um in my mum's living room it's a really big living room and um, socially distanced and we'd done the training through zoom and it was actually really good really helpful even with me having a track it was good to watch um and it made me realize how you know there's a lack of understanding and knowledge about track me in training that sort of thing so that's also something i want to um start putting up on my channel and helping companies that do um you know perform and issue the training see if there's any way i can help them by doing like demonstration videos that sort of thing um so we got the training i think that was september or the end of august and then once i had to wait for the certificates to come through once that came through the money was released from the council for me obviously to pay my caterers the direct 
payments but also I was waiting to see how the virus was going, the numbers, all that as well because um, I was a bit scared about you know going back to free people in and out but like I said it's just the three of them, it's all their full time jobs um, they're wearing their masks etc when they're close to me so we're you know we're being as safe as we can and it's actually working out really really well so I moved back home from my mum's, I've not even said when I moved from home yet but I'll go to that in a minute I moved back home in, at the start of October so it's now November, it's working really well like I said and during the day I'm just coming to my mum and dad's house because I'm still working from home so I'm doing that during the day and then going home to my house in the evenings like I would be if I was going to work during the day and then I've got my PAs to assist so yeah that's going really well um, then so I was working from home before everyone else was to be honest because I was a bit scared so I met the company doctor and he advised me to work from home I think it was like three weeks or a month before everyone else did um, which I think was probably the best thing anyway because I ended up there was somebody in my building that had the virus so I think all the timings worked out really well so I was working from home and then after about a month I got furloughed so I think that's what made the lockdown a bit harder as well because there was nothing to get up for in the mornings um, but like I said the weather helped at least I could sit outside but yeah I was furloughed for quite a while um, and then I went back to part-time working and part-time furloughed so I was working two days furloughed three that was June, July, July I want to say and then through August and September the days slowly increased up to four and then furloughed for one day um, which was fine I didn't actually mind being furloughed um, in the end but um, you know I think we were really lucky we did get that support um, so that happened um, back working full time from home just now and to be honest I never thought I would like miss the office that much but it just shows like how much you know your the people you work with like make your work um, I'm really close with most of the people I work with especially my team you know we all get on really well we have such a laugh and it just shows like how long your day is when you don't have that communication and laughs in the office like even going to make a cup of tea you can get a, you know a chat in the kitchen and um, so yeah I do really miss that I miss then um, I had girls around for my birthday in August so I had quite a few people from work then so it was really good to see them and we're hoping to catch up again obviously before the end of the year and um, there's a few babies due in the team as well so we're hoping to catch up with the mummies and that before they have the babies next year so yeah missing the office like I said, I didn't think I would, well I did, you know I would, but not this much, but I think because it's gone on so long, I quite liked working from home to start with, but I definitely miss the office, and I think people are saying we might never get back to office, which I hope not to, I'd quite like, even if we had to do working from home a couple of days a week, and then the office some, it would just be nice to see, you know, to be in the office with everyone again, so fingers crossed that happens. Um, what else? So basically, yeah, I was shielding for four months, um, the day in June we got Nicola Sturgeon announced shielding people could go out for a daily exercise so me and mum were so excited like even just to take Fergie a walk like it makes you appreciate I suppose everything so we got ready, listened to her announcement as soon as she announced we could go we went out, had a nice walk and on the way home from the walk we cut across a park for Fergie to get on the grass and I wasn't looking where I was going and my front wheel fell into a pothole so my whole chair, it was my big chair as well, weighs like 80 kilos or something. My whole chair tipped forward, nearly right forward, well, but it didn't look like, so I think it would have squashed me. Tipped right forward and stuck in a pothole. My mum was walking ahead with Fergie and I was like, then she turned around and was like, oh my God, what's happened? And I was like crying, like, so what happened is all my body weight like went forward on the weight of the chair and like went onto my leg. So my left leg, I'd pull like, pulled all the muscles like up the back of my leg so I was just like shouting my leg my leg to my mum so she managed to tip the chair I don't know how like back herself and holding on to Fergie and the doctor surgery was right across the road so she was like do you want to go to the doctors and I was like no like because obviously you can't just turn up at the doctors now you'd have to book an appointment all that stuff so I made it home if people seen them seen me they must have been like what the hell's wrong with her because like I had makeup all down my face like crying my leg was so sore, got home, 
my dad had come down, he wore a mask and everything to get in the house. Him and my mum lifted me into bed, like moving my leg, honestly it was so sore. My mum thought I'd broken it, so um, got into bed, rest up, phoned the doctors, they said I could go down, but you know, maybe it wasn't a good idea. And like I said, I was too scared to go anywhere, so they just said obviously keep an eye on it, it sounded like I'd pulled or torn ligaments or muscles or something. Um, so that was that fun day out, honestly, the first day out in a month, four months, and I hurt my leg and I can't even walk. How does that happen? But yeah, that was that. So I was then in bed like all that weekend. I phoned my best friend Laura, that you all know, um, because she was like buzzing about me getting out and I FaceTimed her. And she was like, why are you in bed? You've not caught, caught the virus, like going out a walk because I was paranoid by it. And she thought I was away to say I'd like thought I'd caught it out, but I was like, no, hurt my leg. So I explained what happened. She was like, are you joking? So being the best friend she is, she then went round all the shops, bought me heat and cold pads, um, loads of painkillers, sweets, everything to help my leg, help me feel better. She'd been doing that, doing this all during lockdown as well, like dropping off really cute little parcels to cheer me up, sending little cards. A few of my friends did, to be honest, and you know, I think that bit of lockdown really shows, um, you know, the kindness in people makes you appreciate things. But yeah, she came and dropped off this package, um, and then like I said, after a few days, it got slightly better. So that was a bit of a nightmare, and then a few other things had gone wrong. Like I said, I had people around for my birthday, started a month in the garden, all socially distanced. And it was just so good to see everyone again, but literally that weekend, the numbers in Aberdeen, there was a huge breakout. So then we got put in like a two week lockdown, and then I was paranoid, obviously, that I'd caught the virus again, because I hadn't seen people up until that point. But luckily everyone was fine, nobody I was with had it, nobody I knew got it, um, so it was fine. Um, and then since then, like I said, it's been a bit up and down, like good days and bad days, like everyone. And then, um, yeah, all fine. Like I said, we've got the training, the PA sorted, but October, just when I was went to move back into my house, that weekend, to be honest, was a bit of a nightmare. My car stopped working, all the hand controls in it. So I've been right a car since then. I've got a higher car that other people can drive, which actually I'm quite enjoying, because it means I hated driving anyway and I don't drive far. So this way, Dion's insured on it. So we've been out to like Aiden Country Park, which I've got um, in a vlog, which you'll see. With the dogs, we've been everywhere. And like, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe, will I keep driving or will I get a car other people can drive? Because then I might actually go further, do more things. So the car's still away getting fixed. So that happened on like the Sunday. I moved back into my house on the Monday. I'm still not said when I moved to mom's. I moved to mom's at like end of June when we could form a bubble. So obviously we formed a bubble with my dad. Moved back to my mum's so from end of June till October I stayed at my mum's with mum and dad and Fergie obviously. So to be honest it was just a nice change to get out of the house because especially when I stayed there for four months straight like not leaving it. It was really nice just to come back and stay at my mum's um, for a little while and it meant obviously my mum could get home in her own bed and be with my dad because it was a shame like for four months my mum stayed with me and my dad stayed by himself so it was nice we could all be together again so yeah I moved back home in October the car broke and then on Monday moved home and started getting a sore tooth and I was like mm. Tuesday came got worse Wednesday I was like I can't cope so from the dentist couldn't get an appointment on Friday but luckily my dad dentist gave me antibiotics um, turned out it was an abscess. By the Thursday and Friday, my face was swollen. I was in so much pain. So on the Friday, luckily, we didn't know if the dentist would be able to do anything. But because he'd started me on antibiotics on the Wednesday, it cleared up a little bit. So he was able to do root canal. And I thought I'd be like, I was really scared about the root canal, but I was actually totally fine. The tooth was totally dead, so I didn't feel a thing. And I was just so glad to like get some relief. Like, toothache is awful, I forgot how bad it was. So that happened. Um, so the car, the toothache, and then my nanny, my grandma, she wasn't very well. She ended up in hospital for a couple of days. So that was a worry. And then all was fine. And then Fergie took a little bit unwell. He had a sore stunt. Well, we 
you'd think he had an upset stomach. So he ended up at the vet. So it was literally like the month of October was not good. And I kept saying, oh no, there's still two two months after 2020, what's gonna happen? Because to be fair, it was probably things I've missed. Um, like I said, in 2020, it's been a bit crap, but I don't want this to be totally like a doom and gloom video. I want to try and keep it a bit positive. But yeah, like I said, starting the year it was a bit crap with lockdown, shield and all that stuff. Pick a bit up and then it went down again. And now, like I said, I'm feeling much more positive again. Trying to get on with things, meeting people, doing things, that sort of thing. Um, so apart from seeing friends outside a distance, um, I've been going to shops, I feel totally safe in shops. I wear a mask, sanitise, that sort of thing. And I met a friend at the park in the cafe the other day and I thought I'd freak out a bit, but I felt totally safe. The tables was distanced, everything was sanitised, so that was good. So I've been doing little things like that, but nothing major. And I've also been going back to the gym, going to PT, so I'm now going to Banks D gym. And my PT Scott at Fitness Beyond. So I've been doing that for a couple of months now, which has been going on really well. And during lockdown, I kept saying I need to exercise, need to exercise. There's YouTube videos I could do, there's things at home I could do, but I just wasn't motivated. I need to go, like, I need to go to the gym and the PT to actually make me do it or just end up not doing it. So yeah, I go to him every week, which is really good and I'm enjoying. Like you just feel so much better once you've done an exercise or done something. So between PT, taking Fergie out, walks, I say walks with Rose, and meeting a couple of friends, that's all I've really been up to. So I really wanted to get back into filming. If there's any videos you want to see, let me know. Like I said, I've filmed a few bits and bobs over the last couple of weeks. Um, going to try and weekly vlog um, or every second week because my life's not that interesting. But like I said, it's coming up to Christmas, so I've got a few things, um, ideas I want to do, a few Christmassy bits. I filmed, I'll film putting up my tree um, and make it all Christmassy. And yeah, I don't know what else. Um, Dion, you'll probably see Dion, my me main meme, main PA in a lot of the videos. Um, we done our first TikTok last night which I'll try and include if I can, but if not, I'll leave her TikToks below. Um, and yeah, I've just got, like I said, a few ideas I want to film, really get into it and see what happens, but hopefully um, everyone else as well, hopefully, um, like I said, the start of next year, we can start getting a bit more normal in our lives and um, we can just forget about 2020 because let's face it, it's not been a great year for anyone. Um, so yeah, oh also, if you can notice my highlighter and my lipstick, uh, excuse the spot, um, the only uh, good thing to come out of 2020 is Jamie Genevieve, who I'm sure you'll all know that I'm obsessed with. Um, she's a makeup artist, YouTuber, the reason I started YouTube really, um, I'm just obsessed. She's like, seems such a nice person, so down to earth. She has launched her own makeup brand um, so that's the highlighter I've got on today. I bought the highlighter, the eyeshadow palette and the lipstick and lip liner and it's all so amazing, so nice. So I'll film maybe bits of that and add it into this video um, just so you can see but I'd really recommend it if you love makeup. Um, go and check her channel out if you love makeup and she's got the two cutest dogs and she's I think from starting I've watched her from the start when she was filming in her little flat in her kitchen. She used to work on makeup counters. From going to that to now being one million on YouTube and got her own makeup brand, I think it's just, you know, amazing. It just shows you, you know, what you can do if you really work hard, put your mind to it. And I think it's just really, you know, inspirational. So, um, yeah, I think that's what's pushed me to film this video again today as well because like I said I was really enjoying doing videos but I didn't get that much out last year and then this happened so hopefully from now we'll be uploading regularly and like I said if there's any questions anything you think I should film please let me know below and like I said hope everyone's keeping well and I'll speak to you soon.